welcome everyone. I'm Tom Boley, Chief Market Strategist at EarningsBeats.com, and this is Trading Places Live. It's Tuesday, August 2nd, 2022, and I'm pre-recording this Trading Places Live for just a bit later this morning. Currently, we are showing futures down a little bit this morning. Uh, we've got Dow futures down about 170 points, S&P 500 futures down close to 25, NASDAQ futures down about 90. Um, on a percentage basis, NASDAQ getting hitched a little bit harder than the uh, other two major indices. Futures, uh, you know, reflecting, I guess, a little bit in terms of earnings. Uh, also, we've had a big run in the market, and uh, we saw a little bit of hesitation on Monday, so I think maybe we're getting a little carry over there. Uh, but overall, I think the market's been doing exceptionally well. Crude oil prices this morning up about three quarters of 1%. We did get back down in that $93 a barrel range. That's been a very, very key area for oil over the course of the past you know, few months. Uh, the 10-year Treasury yield continues to drop down another five basis points, 2.55%. Remember, it was only about six weeks ago, we were at 3.48%. We have lost almost a full percentage point or 100 basis points in seven weeks. Bonds, everybody's piling back into bonds. There is no reason to do that if you're worried about inflation. So this action alone tells me inflation is done. Notice the media isn't really talking about inflation anymore. It's all about the recession. Now we've got two negative GDP reports. So now everyone's piling on on the recession talk. I'm telling you, it's going to flip. It's going to go from inflation the first half of the year, and by the end of the year, it's going to be deflation. That's where we're headed. Anyhow, uh, let's go ahead and go through today's agenda for you. Going to do uh, the daily market recap, start off the show as we always do, then jump into talking technically. I'll give, give you a stock charts tip, uh, something I do every day on stock charts on the shows, and I'll show you how I do it uh, in case you're interested. Then we're going to talk a little bit about chart lists. This is really uh, one of the focal points, if not the focal point, over at earningsbeats.com, in addition to uh, providing market guidance, which I think has been impeccable, especially in 2022. Um, we also provide a lot of research for our members, and we do that in the form of chart lists. We use the stockcharts.com uh, platform. Um, I think it's fantastic. I love the way chart lists, you can use those to organize your work. And uh, prepare for the trading day. And I'll show you a little bit about what we do there with the chart lists. Then uh, jump into uh, earnings spotlight. Got a ton of companies reporting earnings. Things are really picking up this week. I believe last time I looked around 1,500 companies reporting earnings this week. So it is going to be huge. It's the second tier. A lot of those mid cap software companies are reporting this week. And that's gonna be, in my opinion, the, the real key to whether or not this rally excuse me, the short-term rally continues or whether, whether we pull back. I think a lot of it's going to be in the hands of the software companies, those mid-cap, you know, team, Atlassian. Um, oh, I mean, there's a ton of them. I'll go through some of them a little bit later during Earnings Spotlight. Um, and then we'll wrap up the show with the three you must see. Got three Dow stocks, I think, that are very interesting at key points. Uh, so we'll go through and talk about those. All right, before we get into any of that, let me just walk you over to earningsbeats.com. So if you're new to earningsbeats, this is my home, earningsbeats.com. If you scroll down, love to have you sign up for our free Earnings Beats Digest newsletter. This is the absolute best way to get to know us. There is no credit card required. It's completely free. You can unsubscribe at any time. Uh, I think you'll find it highly educational. I think you might have some trading uh, opportunities from time to time on some of the stocks I talk about. Of course, that's completely up to you and is your risk. Uh, but I will point out some of the things that look interesting to me. All it takes is a name and an email address. So fill that out, hit that subscribe button. We'd love to have you. All right, let's jump into this thing and get this uh, party started. The daily market recap. So what happened on Monday? Well, first of all, it was Monday. So just lower your expectations. I don't know if you all are aware. I talk about it from time to time. I've done a lot of historical research into the, the, the market. The S&P 500, since 1950, 
has an annualized return of nearly minus 15% on Mondays. Think about that for a second. The overall market that the S&P 500 has gained 9% a year on average since 1950. So you would think the annualized return on each day of the week would be somewhere around 9% because we've had a lot of days, a lot of Mondays, a lot of Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays since 1950, right? I mean, they can't be that different. It's just a day. What's the difference between a Monday and a Thursday, a Tuesday or a Friday, a Wednesday? Well, let me tell you, Mondays since 1950 produce an annualized return of minus 15%, nearly minus 15%. There's something to it. It doesn't happen every year. certainly doesn't happen every Monday. I mean, obviously, there are a lot of Mondays that go up. But I always am a little leery, a little cautious heading into Monday morning. Just because market just has that tendency. If you're aware of it, then you happen to notice it a little bit more. Anyhow, Monday was not great. Yesterday, we saw the Dow Jones Industrial Average down 47 points. S&P 500 down 12. NASDAQ was down 22. Mid caps down a point. Small caps went against the grain. Small caps actually up almost three points. One thing that's not different about these indices is the AD lines, which are now just pointing straight up across the board. Uh, that's good news as the market goes up. That's just telling us that there's a lot of buying in the afternoons. And that's how you get those AD lines looking like that. Because AD lines are just based on your volume, which is kind of your multiplier, times your trading range for the day. Doesn't matter if you were up or down for the day. It just matters where did you finish relative to where you traded that day. If you are in the top half, the AD line is going to go up. If you're in the bottom half, the AD line is going to go down. Now, it's going to be impacted more if you finish right on the high because then 100% of the volume is going to be added. If you finish on the low of the day, 100% of the volume for that day is going to be subtracted. So if it happens to be a heavy volume day and you have a strong finish, then the AD line obviously is going to make a big move to the upside. But what happens a lot of times in bear markets is you get these gap downs. And I talk about this all the time. The media, of course, is not going to give you any good news. You're going to wake up to poor news, awful news every single day. So your mindset's already going to be somewhat clouded. And then you see the market down. And then, of course, first thing you want to do is sell. You know, you don't want to take any more losses. You don't want any more pain. And then somehow, miraculously, by the end of the day, it's not that bad again. Hmm. Yeah, Wall Street's taking everybody's money. Anyway, staples up one and a quarter percent, discretionary up a half percent. So your two consumer groups led on Monday. That's never a bad thing. I always like to see consumer stocks doing well. Personally, I'd like to see it flip, I'd like to see the discretionary outperforming staples, but discretionary off of this recent low or certainly in the month of July crushed staples. Look at staples basically going flat most of July. And look at what was happening with discretionary. Money was rotating all month to the more aggressive discretionary area. Pretty solid action there. Anyhow, energy among the losers yesterday, energy dropped more than 2%. Real estate down almost 1%. Financials down about eight tenths of 1%. 10 year treasury yield, no economic news out today, by the way. And the 10 year treasury yield closed yesterday at about 2.61%. But that's what I was just talking about. They open this morning. Right now, I just looked again down about four basis points, 2.56, 2.561 to be exact. So we're now down here. I mean, is this starting to look like an up or looking like a downtrend to me. I'm guessing it looks like a downtrend to everybody else as well. Topping structure, a little head and shoulder top, breaking down, heading lower. Good news if you're thinking about refinancing. You know, if you missed it on the first time down, I think you're going to have another, sh another shot at it here. Rates coming down. That's going to be good for home construction. It's going to be good for a lot of things. It's going to be good for valuations of growth companies. I'll tell you that. One of the things that hurt valuations of growth companies, look what happened in the first six months of the year. Yields straight up. I'm a CPA. I mean, my prior... Uh, employment was as a CPA. I was a principal in a CPA firm in 
the Washington, D.C. area for many years, a couple of decades, actually. So, um, you know, I've been involved in valuations, and I can tell you, interest rates, when interest rates are going higher, it's, if, if everything else stays the same, growth rates, your projections, everything stays the same, and only interest rates are changing and going up like this, valuations are coming down. Because all your future growth, all your future earnings is all impacted by higher interest rates. Those future earnings are not worth as much in a higher interest rate environment. So that right there, we took off right basically at the beginning of the year. Look when we topped. Is that June 14th? Stock market bottomed on June 16th, 17th, right? The end of that week. It all coincided together. Now we've got 10-year treasury yield dropping and we've got the stock market moving up. Now, one thing you might say is, well, I thought, you know, 10-year treasury yield and the S&P 500 went together. And if you follow my work, typically they do. Because normally the 10-year treasury yield goes up because of what? Strengthening economic growth. That's why yields usually go up. That's why you would sell bonds. When the economy strengthening, S&P 500, uh, S&P 500 companies' profits go higher. And so to participate in the stock market's gains, a lot of times you see rotation out of bonds and in the stocks. When stock market's doing really well, you'll hear firms like um, Goldman Sachs say, we're changing our allocation. We're going from 60% equities and 25% bonds and 15% cash to 70% equities and 20% bonds and 10% cash. So that as that allocation changes, what happens? They sell bonds, they buy stocks. What happens when you sell bonds? Bond prices go down, yields go up. So normally the relationship is that yields go up, stock market goes up. So what happened in 2022? Yields went up, why didn't the stock market go up? Well, think, ask yourself, why were folks selling bonds? Were they selling bonds because the economy was strengthening? We're going through a recession, two straight quarters of negative GDP. That's not why bonds were going up. Why were bonds going up? Bonds were going up because the bond market didn't know if the Fed had control of inflation. And so as inflation expectations rise, so do investors' requirement for yields. So you're not going to hold a bond yielding 1.6% when inflation is you know, ratcheting higher, 4 5 6%. So you sell the bonds. But you don't get in the stock market because there's no economic growth. Everybody was selling bonds and stocks, which means got a lot of cash building up on the sidelines. Yields start to roll over, inflation scare gone. Now money's pouring back into stocks. That's what's happening. S&P 500. So let's talk a little bit. Talking technically, I always like to start here. A lot of times I finish here as well. Um, S&P 500, there's your bottom I talked about. So the yield, let's go back to the yield right here. Top, June 14th. S&P 500, bottom, June 16th and 17th. And now we've got this going up while the bonds or while the yields are coming down. So now that ca cash is going right back to work in both places. Cash coming off the sidelines, going into both S&P and bonds. Now, the, what norm, one of the things that helps drive stocks is the rotation from bonds to stocks. It's, it's new money coming in, but it's also rotation. So as the economy begins to strengthen again later this year and into next year, which I believe it will, that's when you're going to see more rotation from bonds, more money coming out of bonds. Um, and you will see the yields begin to stabilize. Right now, I think we're going to price in a little bit of deflation. And then once we get to a certain point, then when the, mark, when the stock market rallies, we'll see short-term rallies in treasury yields. And then the market will go sideways. Stock market will you know, pro see some profit taking. Yields come back down. Anyway, uh, I love the action here. I, I said a while back, I thought we had a target uh, or at least short term what I was expecting. 
was maybe to go up here and test this area, which is about 4175, 4180. Notice the prior lows were down here just below 4200. Right in here, just below 4200, got down to 4100, back to 43. Then we broke down. Then we came back up here. I really think this 4100, 4200, and maybe even a little higher. I think this is going to be like the consolidation area for the S&P 500. Maybe in September, we take one more dip lower. I think it stays well above the June low, though, at this point. And then I believe we go higher. Maybe we don't even dip. This is going to be an interesting area right here as we come up. I think, and what I've been telling earningsbeats.com members is you want to be a little bit more cautious now. I mean, it's been a big ride off the bottom. Um, I literally sent to our members on, I believe it was June 17th. And I said, I am calling the bottom right here, right now. And I'm fully invested. That was my exact words. And I was, not only was I fully invested, but I was leveraged. I had the QLD. So I had more invested than what my accounts were. Cause I just, I saw all the rotation wall street moving into more aggressive areas, even though we were going to lower prices. So you look at a lot of things in technical analysis and you see the new lows and I'm sure new lows versus new highs and you know all the uh, different breadth measures probably were many of them were going down and that's why I don't follow that stuff. I don't find value in following it. To me, it's just more noise. I see so many times when that gives wrong signals, just as many as when it gives right signals. Just my opinion, hey, if you use it and it works for you, great, keep using it. I'm not, it, it just doesn't work for me. I've never figured out how it can give me any leg up on the market. <clears throat> Rotation, on the other hand, I've been writing about it. I've been talking about it. I write to our members about it. I'm sure they can all tell you if you're not a member. I write a lot about sustainability ratios. I think it's incredibly important to see not only whether the major indices are going up or down, but where's the money going? What's leading? What's lagging? How long is it doing it? I mean, if you know you have some great areas of the market leading for a period of time, um, you know, or uh, lagging areas like defensive areas leading for a short period of time, that's okay. You don't want them to do it for a long period of time, and especially after an extended run to the upside, like we saw back in December. Likewise, what you do want to see on the way down is as you set new lows, you want to see money beginning to rotate away from defense and into offense. That's just telling you Wall Street's repositioning for what could be a major rally. That's what I talked about right there. And now we've got this S&P up 13% off the bottom. I think the NASDAQ was up 17 or 18% off the bottom. Okay, so I wanted to show you the candle glance feature. So you all know, as I start off and I, you know, start off the show, I always, um, you know, the daily market recap, I always give you this candle glance chart. And if you ever want to know how you set up candle glance, first of all, when you view list, if you're looking at a chart list, come down here and click on candle glance. Now it'll probably be a default until you set your own, how you want it to set up. Now I kind of like six months just as, you know, I'm looking at major indices. I'm looking at the sectors. So I think six months gives me a pretty good view of the price action. It gives me good view of the accumulation distribution. You know, are we going up? Or are we going down? And then the PPO, which is my momentum, my primary momentum indicator. So I've got all of this and my and volume. All of this is showing up on my candle glance charts. So the first thing you have to do is you go in and you set up your, your charts, however you want to set them up. So let's say... Let me go to uh, my normal. Here's a daily one-year chart, PPO, RSI. So you want to you want to look at your chart lists, but you want to look at it your own way. You know, you want to quickly be able to to look at a bunch of stocks on your chart list, but however it is that you like to look at them. So you might be a short-term day trader, maybe you like an hourly chart. So how about we go up here and we switch this to hourly? Uh, we'll leave the PPO. Or actually, you know, maybe maybe you like the MACD. I used to use the MACD. PPO and MACD are essentially the same. PPO, though, is based on the percentage difference between your default EMAs. So 12, 26 period EMAs are what's used for the um, 
MACD and the PPO. And so the, the PPO is just a percentage difference between the 12 and 26 day EMA. MACD is the dollar difference. So let's just pull up the MACD. You wanna use the MACD. Um, and let's say <clears throat> maybe, I don't know, rate of change. Maybe that's something you like to see. This is a 12 period, but we're using an hourly chart. So maybe we'll do like 32 hours. That's roughly one week, six and a half hours in a day. So 32 hours, I don't know if it'll give me 32.5. I don't know if it does decimals, but we'll do 32.5. That's one week in terms of hours. Um, what else do we want here? Uh, we don't want to do it for a year. How long? Let's just let's just do it for 15 days. We're, again, this is for somebody who wants to do something, you know, really short term. Um, let's see what this looks like. All right. So that's your chart going back 15 days, looking at an hourly chart with the MACD, the rate of change on the bottom. Here's your volume. And you want to set this up as your candle glance. Let me show you how easy this is. See this plus button over here? These are your chart style buttons. And if you haven't set any of these up, you're just going to see this little greater than sign and you're going to see a plus. Click on the plus. Chart style description. I'm going to come out here and I'm going to put candle glance. Now I'm going to hit replace. Now, if I don't remember to change this before my next show, I'm going to go to do my daily market recap, and I'm have everything set up this way. So hopefully I'm going to go back and change things. All right. So now I just clicked and replaced my candle glance um, style. So now what happens now I'm going to go in and look, and this is what will happen if I go in and do my uh, next show. And there you go. See, it's different. Now I got the MACD on top. There's price action volume and there's my rate of change. And it did 32. So I guess it cropped off that half day. So you can look and see and just compare, okay, over the last um, week, what's happened? NASDAQ is up 7% over the last week, S&P 5% and so forth. Now, let's talk a little bit about um, now that I give you that, gave you that stock charts tip, let's take a look at chart lists. So here, I put together a strong earnings chart list, and I do a lot of different chart lists over at Earnings Beats for our members. All of these literally can be downloaded with one click of a link and then a password entered, and then you can literally download all of our work into your account. So let me just show you first. This is our strong earnings chart list as of July 27th. It's in chronological order. So any of these charts back here would have reported close to three months ago. It's, con it's a constantly revolving door. I keep it in order, but it's in chronological order. You come all the way down to the bottom and these are the last ones that just got entered. This would have been probably about a week to 10 days ago. I haven't, haven't updated for last week's earnings yet, but here's the, the end. <clears throat> and so you can see on this list, 338 charts. So I've already vetted for our members these 338 companies, which have beaten Wall Street estimates as to both revenues and earnings per share, and also um, are liquid. I've made sure that you know they trade enough volume for our membership. And I've looked at their charts, and there's something about them I like. Either I like the stock, maybe I like the group, maybe I like just the fact it was in a downtrend and had a great earnings report, and it looks like a change of character on the chart. It gapped up, something like that. Those are the things that go on to this. So now members have this. And now that you've changed your candle glance, if you got this list, you could bring up all 338 charts in your own candle glance form. And so I can quickly just take a look and see what it is I'm, you know, maybe I'm looking for stocks that are making big moves in the last week. Um, you know, that's 23% right here, you know, over the last five days, trading days. Remember, this is only a 15 day chart. So look at that move. You know, maybe you got uptrending stocks, but you wanna see an uptrending stock with a minus, you know, so it's got a little pullback. So you're looking for rate of change that's less than zero. Market's been up, so not a whole lot of those. Trying to see here. 
well, we could run a scan against it as well, which would be a lot easier. Here's one, this is consolidated energy. So it's five day rate of change is negative. Maybe I want to buy it. Maybe I don't, I don't know. Here's one down 3%. This is e-health. This is a stock's been under a lot of pressure. Um, but I think it was life insurance. I think it's part of life insurance. And uh, life insurance had been better. Anyway, just looking at these. I mean, so again, you can change your candle glance. Look at all of these charts in candle glance form if you'd like. Be a great way to do it. Um, but we have other. Uh, this is our strong AD. This is the one that focuses on the AD line. So I'll give you companies, probably over 400 companies on here, showing excellent accumulation distribution lines. So a lot of times these are great trading candidates in the morning. If, the, if there's morning weakness, many of these stocks bounce back. That's how they get strong AD lines. So a lot of times look at these on a candle glance basis, or you pull it up in summary form and just look early in the morning at which stocks are underperforming, go from there. Short squeeze chart list. So looking for stocks in the title, I have the percentage, the short percentage of float. So this is the largest, or well, this was the, this was the one that was out back earlier in July. Actually, it has been updated since then. I just updated it yesterday. So this one's off the list, but beyond the meat, this one's been heavily shorted. So when you go in here, if a stock starts to break out and I have average volume down here with a line, because with a short squeeze, you want to see the volume accelerate big time and prices start to go up. That's the definition really of a short squeeze. Heavily shorted, plus a lot of volume coming in. All right, earning spotlight. And by the way, I do a number of different chart lists. Those were just three of, uh, just to give you some samples of some of the things we do at Earnings Beats for our members. Um, from an earnings perspective, um, well, a lot of companies came out. Um, Atvi, ATVI, if we pull up the symbol summary, we can find what's going on pre-market. <clears throat> Yeah, it's pretty flat. Um, WMB reported last night. By the way, at me, beat, WMB beat on their bottom line. Not really showing anything there yet. Devon Energy beat, stock down 12 cents. Energy, um, I, th I think a lot of good news is priced in there. Um, SPG, big uh, real estate company, up 1.7%. Wanted to point out, though, Pinterest. Pinterest got a big lift yesterday, even though they missed earnings estimate. They uh, came in 17 or 11 cents versus 17 cent and yet up $3 and 57 cents, almost 18% this morning. All right, let's do the uh, three you must see. And I'm going to go through these pretty quick. These are three Dow stocks. Intel, which came out with earnings, <clears throat> you can see uh, gap down, very, very heavy volume, most, uh, most volume of, of the year. Gap down though, and we've got hollow candles. So we got the AD line going up, even though price action's going down. I have a feeling this holds. I think we're going to go back and fill the gap. Next up, remember Walmart talked about how inflation killed this, you know, killed its earnings or warned. Anyway, here was your big drop because of it. It's all the way back to gap support or gap resistance. Made it all the way back up. Look at the AD line going up. And then the last one. HD also hit on that Walmart news five days ago, moving back up. Watch this 310 area. 310 is a big level there. All right, that's it for me. I appreciate everybody tuning in. I'll be back on uh, Wednesday over at earningsbeats.com. Come over and about quarter till nine, hit Trading Places Live. It'll bring you right into the room. Have a great day, everybody. Happy trading. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.